Hi, I'm Will Cedric. I'm Gabe. And this is Inside the Bar. Well, Gabe. How's it going? I'm so excited for this episode. What? You are excited for this episode? I'm excited. You've been jumping up and down all day about it. It's, and... It was a really good episode of Robot Wars. And last week's wasn't so great. I just feel like we're back in the swing of it. Everything's good. The I, sun's out. I was excited. I, was, I thought the last one was a bit lacklustre, but this one probably pumping back up again. Not hugely, because it's going to be better to come. But Well, we're going to we're we're talk, we'll talk about that. But yeah, welcome to the show, everyone. Inside the shop. Should Let's we do, do inside, inside the, the shop? shop. What have you been up to? So inside the shop is exciting at the moment. I'm decided to, uh, I, I think so before, rebuild uh, the small room, Legion, the flipper. Oh yes, this is right. You've got the games festival, games festival game thing coming up. Insomnia. Insomnia. <laughs> no one so sleeps at insomnia. They just stay up for four days and get really excited and weigh too much sugar. Anyway, we're going to be doing fighting robots there. You're shuffling a lot. Sorry about that. No one's going to be able to hear anything you've said now. <laughs> But carry on. Let's come. I'm, I'm in a good position now. Okay. So now, um, Legion being rebuilt, and I'm actually posting up build pictures on a sort of daily basis of the rebuild of that one. Com- uh. Completely to bits, and now rebuilding it all the way through the stage. So look out for that. It's so on the Team Legion Facebook. Teams, well, Team Sabertooth. Team Sabertooth. Well, Sabertooth Robot. You have got no clue <laughs> what your, what <laughs> your had team a, is called. There was some mix-up. It's business. ridiculous. There was some mixed-up business. Anyway, we had a downstairs mix-up. We saw it out. <laughs> But we'll actually link it up to inside the box as well so people can see it if they want oh, to. Oh, yeah, I'll share it or something. Do some sharing. That's going to be golden. But that's exciting. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Just the rebuild. The rebuild for inside the shop. Um, I'm going to be using uh, Sabretooth's Super Duper controller on it, which is exciting. Ooh, so I'm actually going to be enhancing it. It's going to have a bit more of a... So anyway, <coughs> it's exciting. Awesome. Let's do the news because I'm excited. Let's get on to the news. We've got, got some, some good stuff happening. In Inside the Bot news... Yeah. We've got some new T-shirts. So we did a live stream of the T-shirts where a lot of people liked your beard, which was exciting. I mean, yeah, you've got a solid beard then. You've been you're proud of it, rightly so. Um, but we're distracting from that. The it T-shirts. We've got some T-shirts, got which some is t-shirts amazingly and lovely. Cool. You can't really see them in the recording because you're a terrible cameraman. Uh, it's, it's so shaky. It's <laughs> no, but that's because it's live. And, and, and you get too excited when it's live. You get too excited. And remember, there's that tiny pillow that I laid my head on, which is why the camera goes all over the place, because uh, I'm laying down. Lovely. Testing out that pillow, they said. <laughs> but <laughs> but the T-shirts look good. Well, T-shirts are cool. Um, um, we'll probably, I don't know what we're going to do with them. Uh, well, you bought them on a whim. I don't know. Well, <laughs> you just got too excited and bought some T-shirts. But again, you know what? Well, one day we might sell them. We'll see what happens. Might sell them, might give them away. Wait. We, we, <laughs> <laughs> We may well I do that. I already gave one away to anyway, you. Anyway, yes, you did give one away to me. The other thing that we've got in news, what have we got? Well, actually, we've discovered that our recording equipment, like we said before... Well, we always knew We this. always knew that. But we've decided, in Inside the Bot, to invest in some recording equipment. So, for those out there who've maybe been tarnished by some bad quality sound, And I have to point out, we haven't got it yet. no. It's not now, because it's still Because if you're thinking this recording equipment is sounding crap, it's still I don't know what crap. these guys are doing. We're still doing uh, it with a potato and, and a bunch some, of apes. some string. But <laughs> we've just invested in uh, microphones, in yeah. a mixer, and all the stuff. Potato. We've got We've got the little the little um, microphone holders and the, the cover on the what front. What are these hand gestures? Oh, because I'm excited to do it. It's going like to look like a 1950s radio. Yeah, it's going to look beautiful. <laughs> so, it's gonna be, so that's a great bit of news. What else have we got in there? Yeah, your ears will thank us. Your ears will in fact. Now this thank week, thanks. there's this really on Sunday. Yeah. This week, there's this really handsome guy on Robot Wars. <laughs> An amazing guy. He's going to be on. There. And his friend and and his friend's daughter are also on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dear. And that's obviously Team Sabretooth, which you're you're a part of. I'm um, part of Team Sabretooth. Yes, yeah. we are going to be on this Sunday, episode four, Robot Wars. Do not miss it. It's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be There's amazing. Some quality robots. And there are some amazing in robots. Your group. This is why I'm excited for this, this episode because it's got some powerful bots in there. Mm. It's going to be cool. So that's on Sunday. Yeah. And then if you've got any news. What? So this is un- what, you, what do you mean? If, I saw that. It says appeal it's for news. It's an appeal for news. If you, you run, if you run a team. <laughs> Right. Okay. Send us send us an email inside the bot oh. at gmail.com and we'll read out your news. If you've got an announcement, you wanna, you know, 
Oh, okay. So if again, I'm trying to yeah. turn us into a bit of a press outlet. Got you. So you guys, if you're out, I can see where you're going with it yeah. now, rather than the peeling because I mean, yeah. you're dragging up all the sorts of old, oh wait, I had some toast <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I have some beans. That's not news. So if someone says we're doing this or we're going to introduce that, we'd love to yeah. spread your news on Inside the Bot. Get inside your bot, spread it. Spread, spread the news. Good. So that would be excellent. Um, so email us in or get in touch by Facebook. And what's our email? Twitter. Inside the bot at gmail.com. Oh, and I'd like to also do... Can I put this out? This is a care for. I've not just thought of it. Oh, OK. Can another team send in their death hum? Mm. So do it safety, keep it safe team, but let's try and record a death hum, send it to inside the bot. What I'd like to do is start to collect a lot of death hums and then get you, the listeners, to rate them. And we maybe could give out a death hum trophy. So that was the news. Robot Wars. I think they had an episode this week. They did indeed. Let's talk about third episode. Have we got a guest this week? Oh yeah, we've got a guest. Who's our guest? We'll talk about him in a minute. Okay, that's fine. That's a him. Right. Is it him? Yeah. Good, that's fine. So, so this is Robot Wars Heat C. Yeah, Heat C, Heat episode C. three. Heat C. Do they call it Heat C? Yep. Yeah. So I'm calling it episode three, Revenge of the Flipper. Revenge of the Flipper. Okay. Because we haven't had a flipper go through. We've had a lifter in okay. Shockwave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not flipping anyone. No. And we've had a spinner. So we've got a lifter and a spinner, and this is going to be. And now we've got the Revenge of the Flipper. If a flipper goes through, because we haven't talked about it yet. Well, we haven't spoken about it. But everyone knows. But it's. Okay, let's talk about let's talk about the robots. That's what we want to do. Yeah, we'll talk about Battle One. So this was the first four way. So what robots have we got? We had Overdozer, yeah. which was a lovely cabinet. This is no do you know what Overdozer is classic old school robot. It's great. <coughs> it's someone's like on oh, MDF, that's gonna be strong enough. Yeah. Because when you're building a robot and you've not really had much experience of other robots before, you start putting on a bit, oh look at that inch stick of MDF. That's massive. Nothing's gonna go through that. Mm. And then when you get there and you put your robot on the bench and you go and look at other ones and you go, Oh my god. <laughs> Well, but they've happened? obviously seen Robot Wars before. Yeah, but you know that they people, had to. But people have a problem scaling stuff. They have a problem scaling stuff. When you see Razor in the flesh, mm. it is massive, yeah. massive. So, but you think it's little, but it's not. It's huge. So, you, it's one of those things. You have, and you see the power of things. You know, you see um, carbide yeah. in, in the, and you go, oh my god, it's a beast. <laughs> so. It's always difficult to do, but great. You know what? Well, even they put a petrol engine in it, which is cool. I think, it was, I think it's got a strimmer in it by the look of it. I like it. And then they've got the strimmer it. blade on the back. I don't know what they hope to do, but kudos to them. They built a robot and it was in a heat, it so that's amazing. Up, yeah. Awesome. Definitely. And it's kind of a lime green. Which, uh, well, like that's, that. that's like, yeah, let's make it bright. Yeah, I like it. So no one will miss it yeah. when they destroy it. It did get destroyed as well. We'll come to that in a little bit. So then we had Dan Tomkia, a classic. Dan Tomkia, um, classic robot from Robot Wars. And a flipper. Had its own toy as well. Um, did it? Yeah. In fact, if you notice, the, um, uh, Stuart, who's I imagine doing the flipper, is actually using a Dan Tomkia toy with a lever on it to do the flipping. That is fancy. That is like fancy. That. So a tiny Dan Tomkia toy. And uh, I'm not sure I buy what they say about, oh, if, if our flipper doesn't work, we can just spin round and cause some damage. Not, I'm not sure about that. Also... Whilst we were watching it on Twitter, someone mm. said, um, uh, mi- what is military-grade... They sort of said military-grade materials or something strange to that military extent. Military-grade steel. I'm not sure you even said that. They said something strange, and it, it sounded odd. But um, I don't think it's made of that at all. I think it's made of mild steel. OK. So not even hard ox. <clears throat> no. I think it's made of mild steel. Sheet. Okay, and then we go on to Glitter Bomb. Glitter Bomb is, was, has the axe and some of the internals from Edge Hog, an yeah. ancient robot from Robot Wars, which appeared in many different guises. But obviously, the chap's daughter's got hold of it this time, and uh, rightly so, painted it pink and made it a little bit more exciting, I think. Yeah. Definitely. But axe good, robot. Good to let a girl get involved in the design. Definitely. Good axe robot. Shame she's not, she didn't really do any of the driving. Well, her dad wouldn't let her, would he? Mm. Really? He said he was going to, but then basically. Didn't even let her touch it. <laughs> she was sort of, it was in front of her, but that was it. Yeah. And then Team B Remix. Uh, so, King Buxton. Yeah. 
I'm not, I, I'd love to. I should have asked him. I always get mad to ask him where he got the name from because it's <laughs> such a strange name. Is it named after it is the weird. water, or uh, does he live in the Buxton Hills? What? Well, but anyway, it's a King Bee remix. Old, super old school yeah. robot that one, and great to see it back. Apparently, he speaks Japanese. Does he? Well, he needs to because I think his wife's Japanese, isn't he? No, the robot speaks Japanese. Oh, that's what they said. What? It was a, kind of like a weird narrative they went with throughout the whole episode. That's strange. Where she said the robot spoke Japanese and said Japanese things to it. I, I didn't didn't catch any of that. I think they should have just. I generally ignore the people um, and just look at the robots. So I know, it's just a weird one. That was strange. Anyway, King B, Spiky Brick. Um, I think the, the chap from King Bee, Spiky Brick, the chap from King Bee, I think when he was looking at some of the other robots at Robot Wars, and mm. I spoke to him when I was there, he said, some of you guys have made robots which are, they, they're just like making mine look outclassed and old. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that he does a brand new King Bee remix a re remix. A re remix. A remix the mix. So let's. But let's. I think you should call it remastered. King B remastered. Did you hear that? Active weapon though. Let's have an active yeah, weapon on it. Let's just see some weapons. Active weapon. That's going to be perfect. But a great little bot. Hmm. So then we got on, on to the fight itself. And I, I think the solid robots are solid. So, King, Team B Remix. Solid robot. Team B Remix is being solid. Yeah. The one, the one's not made out of wood, basically. They're looking very solid. So, all the three <laughs> core ones that are made of wood are looking pretty solid. However, the reason why I don't think Dan Tom Key is made of military-grade materials, or even hard ox, oh, or yes. any other type, is because King B rams one of his spikes right through the front of it. And if that was yes. hard ox, you would not be able to do that. No. In any way, shape, or form, you probably wouldn't even dent it. However, it gets a a whacking great hole in it from one of the spikes. Yeah, it was an interesting fight. I mean, it's one of the, the four ways were a bit weird because there's too much happening, isn't there? And you always get. I I don't think it's that hard to go through in a four way as long as you drive sensibly. If you keep out of the way, I know the <laughs> secret for getting through the secret for getting through a four way is to go and hide in the bloody corner. Yeah, don't get flipped if you can't write yourself, so, and don't so that's glitter bomb, and don't be made out of wood, and then you'll go through. So, <laughs> <laughs> glitter bomb. He said that he had a leak in his yeah. thing. Now, do you know what? All of the CO two robot parts in this thing, they weren't really behaving at full power. It was so mm. cold that um, the first week, especially, right? Definitely. Um, we now understand why the Americans fear it. The CO2, remember they fear the CO2 because mm. it gets too cold? It doesn't So, for anyone properly. who only listens to Robot Wars inside the bots, oh. Americans don't have CO2 in their flippers, they, they use nitrogen. nitrogen. Which may, but then their place is supremely hot. Ah, this is what I had this the other day, right? Okay. Because if you, because it, it struck me that they were putting the CO2 canisters to, to warm them up. Mm-hmm. Yes. So if you warm up a CO two canister, obviously if you warm it up too much, it explodes. But if you warm it up, it obviously it boils off quicker. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, so it, it expands much quicker, and you get much more explosive device. Mm-hmm. Imagine a CO two canister in Los Angeles. Yes. That's going to be. I don't know what heat it is there, but it's. But they pretty, were looking pretty sweaty in Battle Wars. Uh, exactly. So I reckon it's damned hot, hotter than a snake's ass in a wagon rut. Right. I got that. That's a great quote. I love that one. Anyway, okay. I think that's the problem with it. So CO2, not too hot, but also if it's too cold, it still doesn't work properly. So that's the thing. And Glitter Bomb fell foul to that, but we also saw that Dan Tom Kia wasn't really flipping it as well as it has no. done in the past. And King B Remix stayed out of trouble. And it did stay out of trouble. However, it did. Overdoser got destroyed. So Overdoser got destroyed. Um, Dan Tonkia finished it off with a flip and broke it open but it was already yeah. destroyed anyway King B, Rix, King B Remix did knock the hole in Dan Tonkia in this it fight it did a little so bit of a graze yeah. yeah but again it's just staying out of trouble it's staying out of trouble and that was the fight really okay what's the next one well before we hear about the next one shall we hear from our guest oh who's our guest it's TR2's captain Alex Alex so I'm going to say here Alex is 15 years old Right. Yeah. Uh, we talked to his dad, who said, go for it. Go for so it. So Clive, thank you very much for letting him come on, and let's hear from him. Alex, hi. Hi, Will, you all right? 
I'm good, yeah. So, quite quite the uh, episode we had today. Quite the episode, I know. I mean, we didn't remember that much of the fights. When you're up there in the booths, it's activate, blank, 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 cease. You know? So watching the back was actually quite good. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was awesome. Awesome to watch. But we're going we're gonna to rein it back a little bit, Alex. Okay, then. <clears throat> Could you talk me through the design and build process for TR2? And also so, a little bit your your background in combat robotics. So we'll start off then. Uh, I was just a massive Robot Wars fan ever since a young age. And we just started going to some of the live shows after watching the repeats on telly. Mm-hmm. Then after that, we eventually went into actually having my own fighting robot. We started with Featherweight Tiny Toon, which yeah. I became UK champion with in 2010. That was a very, very, very impressive thing. Uh, at the age of nine, I was beating beauties you know some of the really top featherweights in the, in that class yeah then eventually we moved on up to the heavyweights we had toon raider that was the first heavyweight of ours i'm a sensing on, a theme yep yeah, <laughs> a put on tomb raider so we got toon raider all of them are newcastle united themed yeah then we got tr2 which we've just seen on the show awesome so tr2 is your third robot uh yeah, it's the second heavyweight. We've had second heavyweight, few, third robot. Yeah, we've got a few of the heavyweights as well. So we've got Tiny Hertz, which is a scaled down replica of Terahertz. Nice. That's that's a really fun robot. Yeah, I bet. So, are, are is TR two an evolution of your your featherweight? Uh, no, TR two was we just wanted something different. Well, it's a wedge flipper, but. Something different for what we've got. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we started with Toon Raider. That was a low pressure flipper, and I was I was of the mindset I was never going to win anything with Toon Raider in yeah. like UK championships, anything like that. So I needed a full pressure flipper to go and compete with the other heavyweight robots to a very good standard. So that's how we came TR two, and eventually that paid off. And last year I was the UK champion. Yeah, I'd heard about that actually. So who? Who is head of design for the robots? So me and my dad maintained the robot. You know, after it was built in 2013, we built it alongside John Finley of Roaming Robots, Extreme Robots. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we built it alongside him in his workshop. Then me and my dad have since maintained that, made the upgrade, so it's you know it's still in a fighting form and competitive. You know, if, you, if you don't evolve your robots, they're not going to proceed yeah. anywhere. They're just going to stay stationary, and you're eventually going to lose. Okay, so it's yourself and your dad take care of yeah, all that. Yeah, it's me, myself and my dad. We maintain the robot. Awesome. What was it like walking into that hangar for the first time? Cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cold. Apart, apart from cold. <laughs> <laughs> apart from cold, you, you have to get a sense of the size of it. Yeah, I think myself and Gabe, a few of our roboteers, we had mm. one of the, like, the laser thing to see how high it was. It was 90 foot high. Yeah. Know, 90, I 90 feet, about 90 metres. Uh, the thing is hum- is huge you know, so you've got the pits and you're walking down and then there's the arena you, you, until you like up in the drive pod you don't understand how big the arena is yeah it, it is it's crazy I mean that pit you can fit like three people in right yeah I mean when we're driving you, if, you, if you see a robot fall down the pit you, you don't see it mm. it's so deep you, you can't see it so it was just Taken away by the whole thing, were you? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. So this is his second heavyweight robot. Yes. And he's the UK champion. Is that with TR2? Uh, it might well be. I feel like it is. I think it might be. Built, built, however, alongside John Finlay. So John Finlay, pretty good at flippers. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He's, he's a good. Flipper. I mean, he runs. He runs the circuit. The yeah, yeah. circuit. Yeah, yeah. So right. he, but he's good. He's good. Um, he was in Robot Wars originally mm-hmm. with a robot called Ripper. Still got Ripper. Different okay. robot. But he, I think he has over this last ten years refined the flipper. So. Okay. Yeah, I think that's probably a thing. I think a lot of people. I don't want to take anything away from TR two no. team at all. But if you're going to build a great robot, talk to other people who know how. Exactly. It's like so, you know, go and find. Uh, the, uh, who's the dude who is in a sort of little cowl in the forest and Red Riding Hood? No, I can't think of it. He's not Yoda because he's not really good enough for Yoda. John Finlay, um, Obi Wan Kenobi. There you go. 
In a forest? In, is he in a forest? In a desert? Oh, he's in a desert. The <laughs> yeah. sand people. That's it, because I was getting the two mixed up. So, there you go. They go on to find him. They said, oh, you help us with, help us build a robot. So, with gone, that analogy. That'd be 900 euros, please. And then, oh, and then they built one. Does that mean Alex went to see him and then went back home? And it had been burned out by evil robot dudes. Yeah, and then and then he had father, to go off with <laughs> with John Bindley. Yeah, that that could, um, <laughs> and kill his father. Or watch no, watch John Bindley die at the hands of his father. Yeah, and then he destroyed his father's nice big house that he's made. Yeah, I can see that. And then then he kills him. No, he doesn't, no, he doesn't eventually kill him. Chops his hand off though. There's some. Bigger robot guy, <laughs> the emperor of robots, <laughs> just slays him. That's <laughs> gets I, slain I, by his father, and then his father dies. I can easily see this happening, but that's how two RT was made. TR two. That's how. That's R two D two. That's how TR two was made. I think we've we've narrowed it down. I'm not talking about it anymore. That's okay. It. <laughs> What's the next one? So this was Battle Two, which features TR two. Yeah. Orty is the next round. And Orty and Supernova yep. and Big Nipper. I'm amazed I'm doing this without any notes, actually. <laughs> I'm not, because I'm listening to how you... And you're looking at my notes. <laughs> Orty. So, the great thing about Orty is it's a flipper. I love and, a flipper. Um, who, who... Now, test your skills, test your skills. Did you look at the people who were driving Orty? Who were they? I don't look at the people. Oh, my gosh. So, they are actually what was originally Team Bigger Brother. Oh, OK. Who had an amazing flipper. But why didn't it come back? Why did they build another one? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. We need to ask them, find well, out. Well, you were there. Why didn't you ask them? Because I didn't. I didn't get round to it. <sighs> I, I, I wasn't You're meant to be our man I, on the ground. Yeah, I wasn't interviewing everyone. I see. I'm you enjoying been. the time. I'm, I'm relaxing. <laughs> All right. The and Orty's, Orty's really light. I don't know why. It's like what? less than 100 kilograms. It's like 90 something. Is it? Yeah. Uh, well... Weird. Big Nipper. Oh, Big Nipper. Solid looking beast with an articulated disc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has that thing of going, being able to raise up its. Yeah, I like that. that to make it look a bit of stance, Always give it some aggression. Good. Adds a bit of something to the show. Adds to the show. But well engineered robot, that one. Big Nipper. Nice. And TR2, a quality flipper, and it's yeah. got that lovely axe on the back. The bum well, axe. I'm going to do a lot of damage that That is axe. a flag. <laughs> that is someone going clips are a bit boring I'm going to put a tiny piece of metal and call it a bum axe but there you go it... right. it's more so I describe it as a diss uh, well, if you get to the point where you're using the bum axe you're just <laughs> using it bad mannered <laughs> yeah, what you're just saying he's going uh, <laughs> look at this <laughs> I'm hitting you with my bum axe it's like farting on someone <laughs> just like, I... like you know when you yeah. <laughs> you wrestle your brother to the ground and then you fart on his face it's like that it's that. It's that. <laughs> so it's apt for the fifteen-year-olds driving. Yeah, I guess. There yeah. you go. The so supernova. A nice big disc on it. Supernova, old school bot. Old school bot. Um, nicely made. Do worry about the aluminium body on I it. I worry about the electrical <laughs> issues they were having. Again, electrical issues. What's all that about? I don't know. Blaming the Americans as well. Did they blame yeah, the Americans? Yeah, for, uh, for his electrical issues. I think, yeah, I'm sure he did. Blame the Americans. I was furious. I thought, I've had a lot of good things from the Americans, and one of the things they're quite good at is electronic speed controllers. Let's not hear any more of that. So well, I'm so glad you... I want to you listen to, you know, furious. You tell him. Our American cousins. I'll take it all back if it's wrong, but I'm sure he, I thought I got, I'm sure I got furious. <laughs> this is not one of those times where he said nothing of the sort. <laughs> <And> he's <laughs> going to email in, and I'll have to field it. Again, then I'll get furious with him, <laughs> because he did. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway. Not again. Nice big disc. Um, do worry about the disc in itself because it's one it's, a, it's old school robot disc that mm. one so it's a big lump, chunk of metal with teeth bolted into it yep. we don't bolt in teeth and I think we'll find out we what build happens. in teeth we, build, no, we, we just laser cut them in so yeah. they're, they're all part of the same thing and we, he fell foul very quickly to that particular badness so I'd say the big nipper disc looked really strong it was strong yeah in the fight <laughs> get into the fight itself oh so we do the fight yep yeah. I mean yeah the, the disc so Orty Orty gets slain, but by Supernova. Yes. Now, because at one point they said it was Big mm. Nipper, but it was not. Uh, they both took a chunk out of him at some mm, point. Not really. Yeah, they're not? No. They're it, if you slow down, you see Supernova just giving him yeah. a, a slaying. And the thing comes out. And his the... link comes out, and that's it. 
And is that where Supernova loses a bit of his dick? And I think well? Supernova loses a tooth at that point, though. Which is pretty bad because I'm not sure Ortiz that made of that stronger stuff. Titanium, isn't it? Mm, I don't. It's pretty thin, though. It looks pretty uh, okay. thin. Yeah, it's very light. Yeah. Um, so Ortiz immobilised at that point. He's done. <laughs> and then. <laughs> oh, oh, and then we get Supernova. Um, now the poor chap, he actually was spent like all night fixing that thing yeah. to try and make it work. Um, and. Um, I am a little, I'm a little bit issues. furious with him though okay. I'm, I'm going to say this now right? Because he had Six weeks to do Supernova Yeah right? And it was already built Okay. Because <laughs> that's the same robot from Robot Wars So it's just electric So you know to say oh I didn't have time Furious you had lots of time Everyone for them. had the same time Everyone had the same time And some of us built robots from scratch <laughs> I'm not trying to say I'm better. I'm just saying no. you should have maybe let's not do a Will Bales and leave it to the last minute. Will Bales, for anyone listening, is an American BattleBot builder who has a reputation for being a bit late for delivering. No, what's he saying? Right on time. No, it's never ready, always delivers. Never ready, always delivers. Yeah, there you go. And that's him. Proud of him. Proud of him. Right. Anyway, so Ortiz taken out. Supernova yeah. drives into the pit eventually. Oh, first of all, he loses another tooth and embeds it into the wall Lovely. of the arena, and then has, has a toothless like, oh my god, I've got gums, gums, Gandalf, and, and then he just goes, oh, 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 and then he goes around gumming the floor and everything else, and, and then, then he drives in the pit. Yeah. Toothless old bot. So <laughs> he's a toothless old bot. And what's the R two doing? It's driving about it's not really doing any flipping at this staying point staying out of trouble staying out of trouble and you know that's how you go through you stay out of trouble yeah you don't pick a fight with a drain pipe no and I'll tell you what actually who's the strat- the strategist of TR2 who do you think gives the strategy is it his dad no is it the mum the mum is in the strategy she, she knows what she's talking about she watches a lot of fights well she gives him guidance she's I'm not happy about this because Alex on TV said she makes the tea that is a lie she might make the tea, however, she does the strategy. But I, as she's stirring that bag... Yeah, she's going... Oh. What are you talking about, stirring the bag? Stirring the tea bag. <laughs> she, she's going, make sure you around. go for that one. Make sure you get one. Make sure you stay out of trouble. Here's your tea. Here's your tea. Now drink it up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she had that husky a voice. No, but, but, you know. I mean, the point still stands. That's fine. So what have we got now? Well, I don't, have we even said who went through? Who went through? TR2. TR2 and... Big Nipper. Big Nipper. There you go. And King Buxton <laughs> remixed. Oh, you guys, follow Twitter as um, hashtag Robot Wars as it's, as it's airing because it's some, there's lots of funny things happening and lots of the public are saying stuff about things, all sorts of things happening. So it's great fun to, to follow. Okay. Oh, we're not going to say. I can't just, wait to follow just, it in your run. Follow it. I know it's going to be hilarious. I hope people personally attack you. It's going to be brilliant. They may do, but some and Dan Tom m- More likely, people are going to fall in love with me. Uh, no. Yeah, I'm going to get a big following. It's going to be massive. I think your teammate. They're going to fall in love. With. <sighs> possibly, possibly. We'll see though. Rob. Rob. Right, what were you saying? Dan no, Tomkia. Dan Tomkia is through as well. Yes, so Dan Tomkia so and um, TR2. Good. So we've got Dan Tomkia, TR2. Big Nipper. Big Nipper. King B Remix. King B Remix. And the first head-to-head. I want to get these head-to-heads going. I want to... I, oh, I, I don't want to spend too much on you time. No, we didn't do. Didn't right. hear from Alex. Oh. About that first fight. Fine. Uh, that was scary. <laughs> Big Nipper, Orti and Supernova. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so what were your thoughts before that? My thoughts, if you look at the start of the fight, I actually hang back to see what happens with the fight. Yeah. You know, eventually, I'm not sure it's shown in the edit, but we get a charge on Supernova. Mm-hmm. So we're driving that towards the wall, go to fire the flipper, and there's nothing. So that My heart was in my mouth at that time. Yeah, I bet. You know, this, this, this is my one chance, possibly, to make it in Robot Wars, and I've got no weapon. So at that point, it was switch into driver mode, switch into a Rambot mode, which obviously I had from Tiny Toon, from mm. Featherweight Champs. And then just try and boss them around the arena. For, so, fortunately, in the end, Supernova won in the pit. Yeah, it's just really driving your heart out for that one, isn't it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> and uh, then we, when we got back to the pits, we found out that the, we put the, um, the tops of the burkets on the wrong way around. So there was gas going there, but there was nothing to open the valves. Oh, okay. So just uh... so a, a quick, quick fix. But the thing was, when we were 
because uh, I was obviously a junior on the uh, production site, so I could only work a certain many hours a day. Oh, yeah. So my dad was there with a couple of the other, other roboteers fixing the machine. And when they were putting it back together, they put it back on the wrong way again. <laughs> it was not only till we checked it over when we saw it. So it could have had another... That would have been embarrassing. Up. Yeah. So they, they screwed up with that flipper. <laughs> the tops of the... Uh, the thingies are on the wrong way around. <laughs> the tops of the Burkitts are on the wrong way around. So what they is that word Burkitt? That's a, it's a brand name for a, oh, okay. uh, for a solenoid valve, basically. But if you put the tops on the wrong way around... It's not going to work, is it? It's a bit of testing there, team. It nearly happened twice. Always test. And I think Alex pointed out they were on the wrong way around. Yeah. So, golden times. Golden times. Well, they had them on the wrong way around for the first fight. Then he wasn't able to... No, because he has to keep going off all the yes. time because he's not old enough. Hmm. And then he came back and realised that it's exactly. still on the wrong way around. So, do you know what? There's a bit of a bonus, actually, if you're not old enough. It means you don't have to do so much. You can do a lot more pit messing about. So, so, so what happens? Because your daughter was also... Yes, so Esme is also 15, same age as Alex. Yeah. And uh, the chaperone comes and takes you off, and you're not allowed to go anywhere. And obviously, I know, as, as I'm part of the, that team, and I'm her father, then you, know, you get an early lunch... You get all sorts oh, of bonuses. Oh, so you were part... You yeah, got the yeah. bonuses I got well. the early lunch, the ice cream. Ice there. cream? Yeah. Even though it's really cold. I don't know why we had ice cream, but, you know... <laughs> it's it's outrageous. Scotland. It's like, there was summer in Scotland that time. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the thing to do. You get all the extra bonuses. So, if, you, if you're a robot here, take a kid with you. Take a kid with you. And then you say to Rob, Rob, fix that robot! It's not working <laughs> properly! I don't, okay. gonna, I don't want to hear any more about it. I've got this ice cream to eat! <laughs> and... <laughs> I don't want you coming and ruining it for me whilst I look at robots. I must go and have lunch. Oh, I've got to have lunch, darling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was me thinking you were hard at it, fixing up your robot. No, it's all Rob. It's all Rob. He's all over it. He's got his little spanner <laughs> and, it, and his leather pouch. Oh, he puts no. oh, things in. leather pouch. Disgusting. Filthy. <laughs> Can you do the first fight? The first. Let's talk about the first head-to-head. Yeah, what is it? Head-to-head. Dan Tomkier and King B Remix. Dan Tomkier, King B Remix. Who wins this one? Um, this was the first flip out of the arena. Oh, now he did not flip him out of the arena, did he? Who flips who? Dan Tomkier gets a good flip in, wedges him up behind yeah. the pit opening button. Matilda comes in. Matilda gives her a good old rapidy with the discs, the tusks. Saw, we saw the power of Matilda's tusks. The tusks. And she whips him out of the arena. And that's that one done. That one done. Um, that's good. I'm golden with it. Lovely Go. Fight. Next one. Uh, worth noting, King Wee Remix has snapped his chain at some point. He's always snapping his chains. Uh, I think it's just... Weak chains. Yeah. Poor testing. Poor testing. King Wee Remix. Then TR2 and Big Nipper face off in the second Oh, yes, yes, yes. And Big, Big Nipper... Nipper... What the hell? He takes that, takes the disc off and puts the jaws on it. Uh, well, I speak to Alex about this. Let's yeah. just hear from Alex quickly. Okay. Well, we fought Big Nipper quite a few times before, and it's been very 50-50. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, Mark and Graham are brilliant drivers on the, on the robot and the claws. And I was I didn't know what I'd prefer with the, the claws or the disc. I mean, the disc, it's an unknown quantity. It could mm. break again like it did. Or yeah. with the claws, you know what you're coming up against. So when we, when we decided to put the claws on, I had to switch back into what we used to in, in the original uh, smaller arenas. But then trying to move that into the big arena, where you've got so much more space, you've got active house robots that can deal a lot of damage. Yeah. Yeah. It, you've got to change your entire driving strategy when you're in that big arena. What sort of things were you doing differently? Uh, I was definitely using the house robots a lot more. Mm. You, know, you don't have to do so much close battles, so, like sort of trying to turn, turn on any turn in on each other you could use the arena more drive around and try and find one of the best places to attack yeah I suppose you just got a lot more freedom than in a yeah, smaller you, arena yeah you, you can bide your time a lot more and then certainly when you're on somebody you don't let them go because it's so easy to get away because there's so much space yeah. you've got to keep attacking somebody and amazing fight there I I don't know why they put the uh, the grippers on I think they would have done better with the with the disc personally I think they had a bit of broken... They'd broken it, yeah, it wasn't... over in the previous fight. I can't really remember what happened, but... It wasn't accurate, there was, yeah. Yeah, there was definitely something there. It's just, uh, I think, a more formidable opponent if they've got that disc on, definitely. Uh, I think so, but 
got to remember the claws are tried and tested. I suppose. You know, if they had them on the floor and they could go under me every single time, potentially. And um, if, if you were a bin, they would have destroyed you. Yeah. <laughs> as we saw in their, in their little VT. As we saw. <laughs> I think the claws are definitely better for lifting than crushing. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So, in the end, Big Nipper lost control and ended up in the pit, didn't he? Yeah, he was. I think it's getting into that big arena again. You know, it nearly happened in the in the four way when he went on a power drive and nearly fell in. Yeah, yeah I know. He, he did that again, and I was there to capitalise this time. Is it the slippery arena floor as well? Yeah, we didn't find it that bad. I mean, after every fight, we were putting white spirit on our wheels just to clean up, clean all the dirt off. Yeah. So grip for us wasn't too bad, but mm. I know some people were really struggling. So the. The disc obviously had broken. Oh, right, okay, yeah. Um, and it's, it's strange that Alex says, you know, there's a different driving style when you're on Robot Wars. To, to On the live circuit, you've got a lot more room to play with. In, in Robot Wars. you find that as well? Oh, I mean, I've only driven a feather in the live circuit, and there's, so it's quite big for me. But if you're yeah. driving a heavy, you've hardly got any space. But if you're really good at driving around a little space, you should be massively better at driving yeah. around a big space. So... Um, what made me furious about the nipper team is what's the point in putting your nippers on when you don't open them up? No, they were just... They didn't do anything, did they? The jewels weren't great. They weren't even opening, though. And in the end, he just... And then he said, oh, it wasn't working. Mm. So he didn't have anything that was working. But Alex got some great flips to his credit on Big Nipper. Alex did amazing. And Big Nipper ended up losing control, didn't he? And just uh, put himself in the pit. Yeah, he, he notices he's got a big old slidiness around. He's not getting it's much traction so on that slidey. arena floor, so he's super slidey. And he's probably used to driving around on a wooden floor where he'd get more grip. Mm. Ended up in the pit. So I tell you, can I just have a point out there? Wooden floor is the dirtiest floor. It's grubby. Grubby, mm. grubby floor. My robot is full of dirt and dust from that ruddy floor. And a metal floor is all smashing. Doesn't get yourself, you don't get the dirt. What are you talking about? I'm just, I'm just ranting about floors for a minute. This is turning to... I know, I just remembered it, cleaning off all that ruddy dust. It's like being in a sawmill. It's turning to like... <laughs> I got furious for a second. Sorry about that. Let's House go. Husbands <laughs> Weekly. <laughs> Get back to those, those ruddy floors. Oh, it made me furious. Nobody's <laughs> mocked them. <laughs> oh, they should. It would What's get the going dust on? off. Come on. All right, on to the fights. Yes. And we had... Next, Dan Tomke and TR2 faced off. Yeah. Now let's hear from Alex okay. about this. Yeah. That Dan Tomke was my favourite robot from the original TV series. Oh, really? I know. So to go up against that was it was weird to think, wow, I'm, I'm here at Robot Wars fighting my favourite robot. I bet that's yeah, that's kind of the point yeah. where it becomes real, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It take that. You've got to step back a minute there and let that sink in. So were you nervous before that then? Uh, How nervous, nervous do you get before fights? I don't get that that nervous recently. You know, you've just got to take it as it is. You've, yeah. You're fighting in a big arena. It's possibly a once in a lifetime opportunity. You know, yeah. You've got to make the most of it. You, you've got to do what you can to make sure that you do the best to try and get back on if there's a next series. So you just summon but, some power from within and you go. So, yeah, you've just got to relax and always think, right, I know what I'm doing. I know what to do. I can beat him. I've just got to do it now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so what was your game plan going in against Dan Tomke then? Make it up as I go along, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so see what they did and just react to them. You know, confident but not cocky. That okay. that's something we were going by. So it was it was kind of a battle of flips this one with Dan Dan, Dan Tomke. I hate that name. <laughs> yeah. Um I think it's might have said it in the show, but the because it was so cold in the arena in mm. the and in the pits area. Now, the ga- the gas wasn't working as well as it should do, so all the flips were down on power. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. we had Jason Jason from Thor. Yeah, who came on last week, and he said they they ended up putting the gas canisters in the green room. Did you do that as well? Yeah, I think we put ours by the kettle, so when the steam was coming down, <laughs> <laughs> that was warming them up. Cheeky, I like it. So you ended yeah. up doing that. Did you find a bit more power from that? If you can't really tell, it was minimal if there was anything okay. because it was just so cold as soon as it was going through the system hmm. freezing but... but in the end your your flipper won out yeah fortunately so and then Dan, Dan Tompkier couldn't couldn't write himself 
was oh. is that what happened? It was immobilised, yeah. The uh, uh, he's immobilised in the corner. Yeah. yeah. Then we turn around, hit him with the bum axe. <laughs> oh yes, this is the bum axe one. The bum axe. So oh, it's, <laughs> it's been so hard to keep the bum axe secret. <laughs> I am, um, I'm in awe of that weapon. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not yeah. sure if it will ever do anything for real. I think you need to make it a bit longer. But... Uh, we've got plans for the next series if the, if we get accepted, and if there even if there is one, if there if there is a seri- next series, and if we get accepted for it, we have got plans for the Bumax. Oh, I, I... Uh, that, that's all I'll say. Okay, awesome. I look forward to it. <laughs> so it was his favourite robot. That is great, isn't it? So you're fighting your favourite robot. Now, do you know what? He didn't really let it get the better of him, did he? We don't generally talk about people here, right? Okay. But I'm going to say, and obviously I'm not, and I'm not, I'm throwing stones in glass houses. I'm not the best rebel driver, I fully admit it. However, Dan Tom Kia, when driven by its, by its original owner, because I think it's been lent to this, I think they're friends. They bought it, didn't they? No, no, I think it's oh, friends. Okay. They're friends. So Mr. Mike Lambert, and he drives down Tom Kia. It drives like a beast. It hugs the floor. It goes, well, it's like, oh, yeah. And it's, oh, and it's dominating, which is why it's got a toy made of it. But I was, it's, it seemed to just meander about and it didn't really have the control that it, that because you need to do a little bit more training on, your, on the toy. I think... It's quite a hard robot to use to its best ability. Yes, yes, I definitely think so. Because it's got those kind of fangs down the side. Yeah, and the flipper in the middle. And the flipper in the middle. So you really have to get onto your opponent and get him dead centre in, right into or your... up over the top of you, at least. Yeah, yeah. into your robot, really. Yeah, like, yeah. Inside your kind of, bot. <laughs> not, not inside, but you're kind of around him. It's a tricky you drive, push, yeah. You, you flip him up and against a driver like Alex who's you know he's he's pretty handy oh no he's super handy kids are handy no, he's thing. super handy and he, he just wasn't able to do can it can I just say that I have beaten Alex in a fight well he's got to start somewhere hasn't he of course so I'm just saying he's a good driver I rate him as an excellent <laughs> so when I beat him no when I beat him that was, I was really excited okay. Weber was a great leveller remember it doesn't matter how old you are it doesn't matter what you do um it's all about the thumb. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next fight, go. No, because this, we no. haven't mentioned the bum axe. Oh, this is where he gives this him. Is <laughs> this is where so he gives him a tea bagging at the end. His favourite robot, and he's just gives completely it. disrespecting it, giving it the bum axe. And he farts on it. At the and end. he farts on his face. <laughs> so TR two with a big diss at the end. Excellent. On to the next fight, head to head four, big nipper. And King B remix. Okay, so um, at this point, Big Nipper has fixed its disc. It's got the, it's got the spinner back. Popped it back on. <laughs> so I love it. I'm, I'm going to get straight to it. Okay, there's a bit of shenanigans, yeah. and then the disc starts to chew the white stuff off the front of King B. Yeah. Right, and it's raining like snow. At one it was point. nice, wasn't it? it I, I thought it was like really Christmassy, <laughs> and I felt like some jingling, some bells. Ding ding ding. And then he's just nibbling away, nibble, nibble, nibble. But he's not getting that. I don't see a big monster hit. The big it. bang and off it goes. There's but no super <laughs> like that. But he's chewing him up, isn't he? He's chewing him up. Who no. won that one? Uh, I know who won. Big Nipper. Did he? Oh, of course he did. King yeah. B's uh, Link fella. Again, the old Link fella. He's old got, Link. King B's got two links. And I know people were getting furious on the internet about, Whoa, why can't you secure your links? Now, for myself, I understand the perils of losing a link. Yeah. Remember that robot that used to lose its link every time it oh flipped? Oh, my God. But <laughs> you have to bring this up. There's the safety time. measures that you can put in place. A nice bit of tape, all sorts of things you can do. So it's about battle hardening, I call it. Battle hardening your link. Hey, and I think they'll be golden. With King B remastered, new robot, that link's going to be golden. imagined exists. It does, because he's building it. You're building it? At all. Yes. And it should have, have a it should have a Japanese theme because that would be awesome. A samurai sword. S- some, there you go. It's amazing. Some sort of samurai oh. look to the armour, to the sort of cool. <laughs> anyway, that's what we're gonna do. That's gonna be genius. So next we've got TR2 against King B Remix. Yeah. What happens here? Let's hear from Alex about it. Alex! Now you had 
a go at flipping him out of the arena, didn't you? Yeah, but yeah. obviously the gas was so cold. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I couldn't really see them doing anything against you. Yeah, it, as I was saying, trying to sound confident but not cocky, it was just a matter of time, I think. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I think you've got that tried and tested robot. Yeah. Whereas with Robot Wars, there's a lot of new new robots. I know King B is a, uh, a classic, but I think they tried new things on that. You could see that like, you had the drive chain snapping and things. Yeah. They, they, did, have, they, did, have, yeah, they did have some bad luck. Mm. So. But as it went, we finally got them in the pit, I think, in the end. Yeah, what was the plan for that battle? Um, just go for the knockout victory as soon, when we could and try and be the first team to go through nine out of nine points. That yeah. that was something we were aiming for when we are on six out of six like after Dan Tomkir fight. We were, we were thinking we can do something here. We can be the first team on nine out of nine. And that's what happened. Yeah, you guys nailed it, yeah. Yeah. You ended up immobile and in the pit, courtesy <laughs> the pit. of yourself. Yep. They got those nine points. First team to do it. First team to get nine points. Amazing. I mean, amazing skills. And kudos to Alex and his and his uh, parents for that. Amazing. Really well done. Amazing stuff. Great job. And on to the next fight, I guess. Yeah. Not really much else to talk about for that one. No. Dan Tomkier and Big Nipper. Um, and who wins that one? Well, so Dan Tomkier wins it. Big Nipper was really like kept in the CPZ. It's one of the first fights, I'd say, where you see someone controlled. Yes. Um, I think actually Alex is quite good at it as well just controlling someone and keeping them in the CPZ yeah so mm, that was an inter- interesting part of the fight Big Nipper got roasted by a second lot yeah and a second lot got stuck on the wall that was hilarious well. he jammed his drill into the wall didn't he jammed it right in so uh, the old driver of the drill there what the, what the hell are you playing at buddy jamming your drill into oh, little holes know. You can see Sakula get in a bit bored and go, what's in there? <laughs> Bring his drill in. And then, oh, it's stuck. Don't stop my finger uh, in the hole. Do you think there's come out? a bigger robot like Sakula that is his mother? Yeah, this comes goes, along and goes, what the hell are you doing? Oh, I'm stuck. Killy, don't put your finger in there. No, oh, he's got it stuck. Oh, Killy. Oh, what have you done? <laughs> don't sniff it. <laughs> what the hell? What? <laughs> Sniff it, Don't sniff it. <laughs> right, leave that alone. Kill so, it, it's dirty. Leave it alone. <laughs> Don't touch it. <laughs> uh, where were we? You've lost the thread. Have we done the. Oh, oh no, Big Nipper got a nice little hit in at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah. But there wasn't enough. No. I, we didn't really see the true power of the, the spinner on Big Nipper. No. Or maybe we did see the true power and it just wasn't enough. Oh, uh, yeah. More I likely. <clears throat> but. So Dan Tomkier won that one. Was it judge's decision? Mm, I can't remember. I think it was. Okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because Dan Tomkier is through yeah. to the heat final against TR2, who, as we heard, beat everyone. Yeah. And should we hear about Alex's thoughts going into the heat final? Go. It was very much try and repeat what we did in the second head-to-head, but there's a lot more pressure on this fight because mm. it, it, it's the chance to go through and fight the best of the best from the heat finals. So, so at that point, did you know? What, what, yeah. Did you know who the other two that you'd be facing were? Um, I'm not too sure when about it was films. Oh no, so, because uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we filmed it back in March, so I, I can't remember yeah. <laughs> what happened. So, but at that point, you knew you knew that there was ever some awesome robots around. Yeah, we, obviously by that time we'd seen Carbide. Yeah. yeah. Shockwave, brilliant driver as well. So oh, yeah. there's just so many, so many things that could happen. But so, so the nerves are, the tension's high. The tension's high, but I'd say the nerves are low. Yeah. I, I knew what I had to do. It was just a matter of going and doing it. And I'd say you bossed it this fight. Was the plan to just really control him? Plan was to try, try and control him. Uh, we ended up getting the knockout victory in the end, I think. Yeah. It, didn't, it didn't show that in the show, but it was a knockout victory. Oh yeah, he couldn't sell for right, could he? Yeah, he couldn't sell for right. I'm not I think sure they did show it because he had. Correctly. Oh, I don't know if they. Um... No, it was a knockout because he he was leaking gas and then he was upside down and couldn't write. Yeah, it it was a knockout victory. I so we'll that, give you was... a knockout for that one. That's we'll, fine. we'll give it the knockout. Yeah. <laughs> 
So there was a lot of energy going on there, I think. Definitely, definitely. He wanted to get through, beat the big boys. And uh, he, no, he, is. Um, he is amazing. I'm, I'm really pleased for him. What a great story to have this 15 year old kid through fighting the big guys. Definitely, definitely. So Alex is through. Yeah. Oh, shall we hear about what he thought of Robot Wars? His experience so far? That would be really cool, yes. And then maybe a bit about what, what he's going to do, what his plans are, whether he's, you know, maybe he's going to build a battle bot. Who knows? Oh, who knows what he's going to do? Let's have a hear. How's your Robot Wars experience been so far? So far? Just talk me through the whole thing. Surreal. It really has been. So, obviously, as well, going through the emotions, we found out who we were fighting. You know, the potential of fighting Dan Tomkir, which mm. is obviously my favourite robot, it was just, there were so many things going through my head at the time. You had to sit back and you had to take everything in, think about where you are and what you've got to do, and make a name for yourself. What about seeing robots like Razor? See, Razor is, it's a crowd pleaser. Everyone loves Razor pretty much. So it would have been nice to fight it, would have been to fight a veteran like that hmm. and I think I would have had a good chance of beating it oh I think so yeah yeah. I mean so you got, got taken out yeah. by a bit of drain pipe didn't you <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if um, you upgraded much inside it or not but if the, I know if I know he changed the batteries but I don't know what the batteries. else <laughs> yeah. things have changed you know, 14 15 years of advancement in technology yeah. you would expect the new robot to win not forgetting in, they in had theory, a, on paper they had a lot to deal with with warhead as well in the states yeah they had a warhead was the move against complete control this <laughs> on his head the dancing oh that, that, that was brilliant have you been watching battle watson i have been i've been getting up at one o'clock in the morning oh <laughs> well that is we devotion <laughs> That's a work night for me, so I, I can't be uh, can't be doing I, I, that. Unfortunately, I'll date the minute. So <laughs> <laughs> I can only dream of that. Yeah. So, do you think you'll ever go over to the states? Do you think you'd like to enter a battle war? I would love to go over to America. Yeah, you see some robots like Tombstone, Minotaur. And yeah. I'd just love to give it a go at the best out there. It, the level of spinners out there is amazing compared to, to here. Well, they, they, but you've got to remember they've had ten years, you know, extra preparing for spinners for the TV show. Yeah. Know, we've we've been fighting flippers, axes, rambots over here. So we we're, we're we're we make yeah. sure we mention that, don't you worry? Yeah. <laughs> don't want those Americans thinking we're just soft. Oh no, but give it a few years. I think <laughs> oh, we'll yeah. have some we'll have some machines to rival them definitely. Yeah, I mean the thing is you'll never get a wedge flipper over there. Unfortunately, no. Because they hate them. I know. <laughs> what What would you take? Good question. Really good question. Something with good drive straight away. Yeah. Weapon. You, you're really pushing your hand to take a spinner or something, I think. You haven't got many other options. So, I say, saying that though, Beta's doing well at the minute. Well, yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. he's a boss. Peter's doing well, so maybe that could prove me wrong. But and you got the Swiss Army bot of bombshell. Yeah, that that was genius taking out Cobalt's tires. <laughs> I don't. I, I can't wait to interview Moldy about that. I know. She's just gone head on with it. Just go for it. Yeah. It was an awesome fight, though. Like, surgical. But, uh, surgical precision. <laughs> but uh, if Greg or Trey are listening, I'd love to go out to America. Just going to throw that one out there. <laughs> <laughs> they almost certainly are. I mean, who who isn't listening, quite frankly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, sport, the sport of robotic combat is about to take off. I, I think it so. really is. I hope so. I mean, this podcast will then take off, and that is, that's what we need. We need people buying yeah. T-shirts. We haven't made yeah. them yet, but we will have T-shirts, and then people will buy them. Yeah. And then we'll we'll finance you to go over to the states. Brilliant, sorted. <laughs> that's the dream. Right. Sponsors, you know, we're always <laughs> open to sponsors. <laughs> Speaking of sponsors, yeah. So, do you have any sponsors? No, we don't. We're all family funded. Ah, well. Yeah. So, if you're listening, anyone who runs a robot web robot parts website, you know, yeah. Well, for example, got... Wranglebox.com. 
<laughs> NPC <laughs> God robotics. God you, you don't want to sponsor uh, us, Alex. <laughs> I'm sure yeah, he'd love we, to. <laughs> we've got a banner that we take around the live events. So, you know, if anyone wants to give us a sticker or anything to stick on there, sponsorship, we're more than willing to take <laughs> a it. A sticker and a fiver. <laughs> sticker and a fiver. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Right, Alex, I won't take up too much of your time because I can hear your, your phone is going. Good he's got mental, yeah. he's taken <laughs> tweets from all over the place messages from fans <laughs> i mean come come september you'll be probably famous at school i'd imagine i wouldn't go that far you'll be famous you'll be that kid don't mess with him he's got a killer robot <laughs> but yeah thanks for coming on the show man. No, no and, problem. And thank you very much yeah cheers cool stuff awesome we'll see what happens watch this space that's going to be golden I think he's going to build... I mean, he's, he's staying up till 2am watching BattleBots. He's loving it. He's loving it. And I wonder... Maybe he wants to build a BattleBot-type robot, but in the UK. Well, hang on a second. What's a BattleBot-type robot, but in the UK? Like a massive spinner or something. Carbide style. Ah, OK. So, let's see what happens there. I mean... I think they'll have a big influence on Robot Wars Season 2. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Because at the moment... Do you know what I'd love? Why don't we get some, a couple of American teams over? Oh, rubbed your leg there. Sorry, I'm that. not getting to over. It's just well, it's like excited. the Olympics. <laughs> it's like the Olympics. If we were watching swimming now, I'd have given you a little bit of a... <laughs> steady, <feel>. steady. <laughs> It's all those biscuits I ate earlier. Oh, God. You had so many biscuits. Oh, can we go there. straight on to questions? You're going to look fat on the telly. Questions. Um, yes. Go on, then. Give us a question. We've got a couple of questions. Go on, then. We've got one from a fella called Jason. Jason? OK, let's Jason. hear his question. And it's exciting, because it's, it's not Kurt. Oh. No offence, Kurt. We've got one from Kurt as well. <laughs> no, I don't want to miss He's that. always sending it in. OK, let's listen to this one. What is the worst arena trap and why? What is I guess the worst arena trap? hazard, but why? So, I'll tell you what. Let's go from... Um, Ones I don't mind all the way to ones I do mind. All so right. the ones I don't mind The one the, you least mind is the spikes. They're just pants. They just lift but, you up no, they just lift you up and put you down again. Okay. But they don't do anything else. Right now. Yeah. You're facing carbide. Yeah. You're trying to keep your front to him. Because I'm you've got yeah. a wedge on your so front. I'm so I'm luring him to on the back is the wedge. Yeah, I'm luring him into the spikes. So you, no, you're trying to keep your back to him and he's he manoeuvres you to the spikes. Yeah, okay. And then boom, up comes a spike. Oh it's you're lifted. stuck on there. Yeah. He gets around your side, boom. Yeah, but you're up off. in the air, right? You're up in the air. He's as yeah, he come, hits you from no, the side. As he's come up, you've gone up in the air on the spikes, you lift it up above his blade. Yeah. No, but you're not it's not gonna lift the whole he of your robot, is it? Yeah. We've seen it, it just, lifts you up. We've seen it just lift a corner of a robot, though, and then the rest of it's just left exposed. So, no, uh, on its own, the spike... Obviously, if I added uh, carbide to any of All right, these... Let's, OK, oh, what happens if carbide? Oh, uh, carbide. All right, but... Stop going on about carbide. I love it. I know you he loves my beard, he's David not, Moles. He does love your beard. So, so he's only got a thing. See, are you getting a bit I excited? Think. I think he, he might he's got the same hair colour as you actually so he might want to, he might want to borrow your beard we could be friends you could be yeah you should be friends super beard friends you could be friends um, I know so forget freaking carbide right so the spikes you lift know you up put you down that's it okay <coughs> then Flippers. next one the flipper yep. launches you but if you've got a tough bot you just land on the ground again, you're off and running again. So it's fine. As long as you're not made out of wood, you're as fine. As long as you're made out of wood. And even then, I think you just get launched, so it'll be fine. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> it's fine. But the pit, obviously, in the pit, you're out. And that's it, so that's not great. No. The flame pit, though, <coughs> roasts your bot. It ruins your paint, roasts your bot. You've got a problem that your lipos might burn. There's all sorts of issues with You've that. You've got spare lipos. No, then if you've got lipos burn in your robot, no, your fine. robot is... Done. It's going to be a charred mess in there because you true. can't take them out. You have yep. to let them burn out. Mm. So definitely the flame pit is the worst. And which bot came back? Which bot? Oh, I think it was. Um, was it Foxic, which was on the flame pit for ages? Foxic was. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So when it came back, its wheels had griddle marks in the. Yes. It's pretty hot. Those Jason, flames are Jason hot. Said that, didn't <laughs> yeah. Those are flames are hot. So that's where I'm with that. So worst. The worst trap is the flames. And it didn't look like it was easy to get off there either. No, if you haven't got chunky tyres or you've got a low ground clearance, you get stuck on there. I'm going to keep that in mind because I'm yeah. going to be pushing a lot of bots on that. I mean, and carbide them... had a low ground clearance. Yeah, when I put carbide on the flame pit, 
I'm going to grill him down and put on some sauce. I'm going to push on some sauce onto him. Get him the, problem, nice. the problem with that is he'll be immobilised before you even get a chance. No, he'll be on there and I'll be covering him in sauce. That mouldy will take you down. Not with his sauce all over him. Of course he would. He'd take you I'll down. I'll be eating him down. I'll be, I'll be yeah, munching I'll be on him. Down on, munching on him like on a burger. Moldy. Yeah, there you go. I don't know why we're leaving Sam Smith out of this. Because he's so quiet, we always forget <laughs> he's there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Sam. He doesn't listen to this anyway. And no one does. No. Uh, <laughs> it's fine, just mutterings in the dark. It's just us. You look like Gollum as well. What? <laughs> What's, what are we doing now? What about Kurt's question? Well, let's get on to Kurt. Oh, so, okay. well, does Kurt send in questions every week? So the flame pit, because <laughs> it destroys you. Yeah. Kurt. Um, Let's get on to Kurt's question. I'm going to let you read it. I know you're terrible at reading. Thanks for answering my questions. Kurt loves it. Oh, he said another question. He loves it. It's a second batch of questions. Amazing. Sadly, I've got another question that you guys could possibly answer. Ha ha. It's not sad. We love answering Kurt's questions. Kurt, you send them in. We'll answer them. He's in sports. There are always unwritten rules and etiquette. Rules that are not in the official rule book, but violating them would be considered bad taste or poor sportsmanship. This guy knows his sports. What would be considered the unwritten rules and etiquette in robot combat that you have encountered in the various competitions you've seen and participated in? Okay, so I can, this is a great question. And there's, this is actually a thing at the moment which is going to be happening, which is happening at BattleBots and is happening at... Robot Wars, I reckon, in the next season. Why are you looking at my cufflinks all the time? Just, These are quality they, cufflinks. They caught me eye. <laughs> <laughs> they are nice. Right, Kurt, <clears throat> this is amazing. So, what are the things? Unwritten rules. There's nothing, there's no rules about multiple bots. It says one robot, but people have one robot twice. Yep. And this is starting to make people furious. Some people are furious, other people go, oh, you've got too much money. And I think we should do a whole podcast on this very subject, Kurt. You're an amazing sister. You've, you've seen the future, and that's one of the things. The other thing, the other unwritten rule, and this is also from season one of BattleBots, where it actually saw it, is late hits. Late Hitting hits, someone yeah. after cease. You don't do it. Unless you're a house robot. No, even then, <coughs> even then, it's pretty frowned upon. So well, in they the robot... doing that, though. They flipped people out and stuff. No, no, it hadn't ceased, hadn't happened at that point. It had. Not, no, it hadn't. It had. Okay, well, that's... Matilda easy. flipped someone out. Oh, well, sometimes Matilda does those things for housekeeping, because it's easier to get the robot when it's flat, so than try and pick it up like that. I think that. it may have been on the flame pit at the time. No, it wasn't. It was wedged behind the. It was wedged behind the. Button. No, 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 no. This is Foxic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, Foxic got flipped. Sometimes they do get furious, um, but you <laughs> <laughs> but generally a roboteer would you wouldn't go crazy on another when it's so been immobilised. If, 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 if a robot's been immobilised, generally you wouldn't hit it. Hang on. So Dan Tom Kia hitting the wooden robot. Mm-hmm. was actually a little bit of an, uh, I'd say, a yeah. no-no. You shouldn't, because it was on its side, it wasn't doing anything, so it actually should have been left alone. So we've got late hits. Late hits. Bringing too many bits. Bringing too many bits. Or no. And? No, bringing too many bits which are built into a robot. Yes. And one of, would you, have you got one? The third one of destroying someone who's already trashed. Destroying if, someone. If they're KO'd, don't... KO them even more. No, and, and you need to. There's a bit of respect there. Do you know what? I think people they want the carnage. Yeah. They want the carnage, but there's a bit of an unwritten rule. And in fact, is if you are a roboteer and you do one of those things which destroys someone when they're already destroyed, your luck, karma will come around yeah. and someone will do it to you. The thing is, there's a thing of it's three points for a win by a knockout, two points for a win by judges. So you always go in to absolutely tear them apart. Well, no. That's what you're always trying to do. But I thought of this as actually a more of a tactical thing, because if you're actually following all the points, you need to be tactically thinking, this one I can tear apart and I don't want it to continue. But But you need to get the knockout, though. Or this one I need to get, keep a little bit, you know, to keep it, to keep it nice. I'm not a fan of the two points for judges. No, but we talked about that before. Okay. So really, uh, that's that's the three things I'd say. Yeah, and I'm too many gonna... bits that are built into a robot. Yeah. So bringing a spare robot, basically. Yeah, but there's um, nothing to stop you bringing six robots. There's nothing in the rules. No. So you could bring. So there's six fights to get to the. You could have six robots. Yeah. Brand new one each time. 
is a bit silly. Uh, well, there's nothing in the rules to say it's you can't. No. So if you're doing it, that's fine. If but, you're making the rules, fix it. Well, what we're going to need to... Want. Well, I think what's going to happen really soon is, and I'm going to do a podcast on it, I want to get it early. A whole podcast? Yeah. We, well, hopefully we can get. What some are we going to talk about? Get some good guests on. Hear from teams that have been uh, not violated, but feel violated. Okay. That feel uncheated. We can yeah. do some cheating these. We can hear some other teams that are doing it and actually what they think. And then we can find a balance. And then for the community, we can set the rules. We're going to solve it. We can solve it. The cufflinks making noise. I, they did just bang on the desk there. Sorry about Goodness that. Goodness sake. Stop going on about them. Stop looking at them. You're obsessed. You're coveting them. It's like uh, Gollum again. <laughs> <laughs> Leave them alone. <laughs> so, so thanks for your questions. Amazing questions. And we want some more questions. Jason Kurt. and Kurt. Yeah, that was questions. amazing. Kurt, send another one in. Sure. Jason, send another one in. Everybody, send another one in to Facebook or Twitter or yeah. inside the bot at gmail.com. There you go. I'd love to hear from you. Um, we haven't got a battle box this week, have we? No, there's no battle box this week. We're just going to be, we got a week off. Uh, we're going to have a, some bit of a time actually. We need it, and we got some. We're going to test our new equipment, so that's going to be used. Oh on yeah, the next we're going to we're going to have some new audio equipment next time. That's going to be exciting. Yep. So we should hear inside the butt. This is super smooth. Like how we're going to sound like some kind of like quality radio station. We are going to be amazing. It's going to be. Uh, I'm G. I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, it's going to be hi. I'm Will Sedgwick. I'm Gabe, and this is 105.4 Inside the Butt. F Okay, that's done. It's going to be quality. It's going to be good. So, join us next time. Thanks for listening in. Cool. I've been Will Sedgwick. I'm Gabe. And this has been Inside the Bar. <laughs>